Hello folks, this is Dr. Denbor with you here talking to you about probiotics. This is the second in a series and today we're going to talk about effectiveness, why it works, why it doesn't work. Let's first start with the probiotics, my experience with them. I told you last time that probiotics will not work unless the soil, the gut wall itself, is healthy and ready. Today let's talk about the quality, the potency of these probiotics. My experience is that a lot of them are no, not at all what's on the label. I tested them about 25 years ago. We tested 13 different brands and really to my shock found only two had live activity. One of which had experienced genetic drift, which means it was no longer the same bacteria inside as what was on the label. Fast forward to this year, New York State pulled probiotics off the shelves from four major commercial entities. We're talking big box stores as well as health food stores. And they found that almost all probiotics on the market had no activity, no live bacteria. In fact, the probiotics that were for celiac disease even contained gluten. At best, some of them had houseplants in it. This case is still being resolved and the companies are trying to figure out what to do about this quality issue. So that's a real problem. And I've seen this problem being compounded by all the research that's being done because a lot of researchers are not, are not checking the quality of the products. And therefore, this has become an industry-wide problem, not just with probiotics, but with many nutraceuticals because tests are being done on products that are faulty. You will not get results in that direction. So here's my concerns with a lot of probiotics. One. A lot of them have unidentified strains. There's so many different things in them. What we look for is an ID guarantee through genetic DNA testing. And really there has to be third party assays, we call that. In other words, outside people, outside labs checking the viability and the strain what is on the label. Also, there's this factor of unknown potency. It might say three or 30 or 40 billion units on the label. But that's at the time of delivery, at the time that it's being made. How about at the time of expiration? The majority of them have nothing in them because probiotics tend to be very fragile and die off very quickly. So potency past the date of expiration is what we look at. There's also the factor of unknown benefits. We need to use research demonstrated benefits there are thousands of possible probiotics out there, most of which we don't really know what they do. Let's stick to the research, folks. What's been published in well-researched, well-done, top-tier medical journals. We call that peer-reviewed medical articles. Those are the ones that we use. We know what they do and we know that they are safe. So these unknown benefits, let's knock that out. Next is questionable combinations. Why use a bacteria that is inappropriate for a condition? For example, with ulcerative colitis, as well as Crohn's, lactobacillus is really not that useful. There's a lot more useful strains than that out there, and that's subject to next time's blog. But these questionable combinations need to go away. We need to have targeted applications. That's why at DBC and Nature's Remedies, we have over 30 different strains of probiotics. How about the factoid of intestinal survival? It's pretty rough going down into the gut. Stomach acids, which causes an extreme pH change, temperature change, and digestive activity of multiple enzymes can really affect probiotics. So again, clinical trials and testing must be done to explore this viability. Temperature controlled shipping and storage is another important marker. We make sure that it arrives in a cooled state and that the packaging is extremely dry and it is again tested at extreme temperatures to make sure that it is viable just in case the UPS truck got stuck in some traffic jam and a temperature climbed to 120 degrees. So we are very tight on this quality control. A lot of the reasons that probiotics don't work is they're being used in the wrong way or the wrong product is being used. So 
next time we're going to explore some of the basics, some of the targets, which bug works for what and how to apply what when. So until then, I'm Dr. Denbor. See you next time.